Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, anything you uh, may have heard about, read about, someone told you about formulations or ingredients or skin health challenges, Mark Twain said, it ain't, what we, it ain't what we know that gets us in trouble. It's what we know that ain't so. I can't tell you how many times I talk to people who just know things about how the body works. They're sick, but they know things. They know what foods to eat, even though they got eczema and rosacea. They know what nutrients to take, even though they've got uh, heart disease and adrenal issues and skin problems. They know what skincare products to use, even though their skin's a wreck. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just saying that a lot of times it's what we think we know that gets us in trouble. If you have any questions about anything you think you know and want clarification on, we're here for you. If you have any questions about things you don't know, we're here for you and we're here to help. That's what this is about on the bright side. We want everybody to understand the power of nutrition, the power of non-medical strategies for taking care of whatever ails you, the power of digestive strategies, the power of taking care of our health, taking care of our bodies from the comfort of our own living rooms and kitchens and bathrooms and bedrooms, from the comfort of our own homes, rather than having to deal with medical intervention and degrading medical intervention at that and pharmaceutical poisoning and surgical procedures. That's not the way we're supposed to be healthy. All right, 844 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. Please check out the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team as well off our websites. And also our truth treatment products are all available at truthtreatments.com. If you want to check out a cool video that I did with Brianna Stanko of uh, Premier Look, go to premierlook.com. She's got a bunch. She's got a great resource for skin, skin products, and she's just a really on top of it gal. And I did a video with her uh, about the truth and about skin health in general. And you could probably get it at, uh, by looking up pre uh, premierlook.com. Or go to uh, Brianna Stanko, S-T-A-N-K-O, Brianna Stanko's YouTube page. She's got a bunch. Um, I'm, I did three videos with her, but she's got a bunch of, a bunch of other cool videos. And all our Truth Treatment products are available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we've been talking about the pineal gland. All started with talking about fluoride. Fluoride being a major pineal gland toxin, a major bodily toxin. There's no good reason. There's no good reason to put fluoride in the water. All right. I don't care if it helps you with your teeth, which is the evidence is um, whether fluoride really helps you with your teeth or not. Dubious, doubtful. I'm not. I, the evidence doesn't is very non-convincing. Very. What is convincing is the toxicity of fluoride, especially for the pineal gland. The pineal gland being your third eye. Um, a type of third eye, I suppose, has eye tissue in it. You have an eye in the middle of your head. It's responsive to the light. It secretes melatonin and serotonin, your master hormones. And we spent a lot of time talking about melatonin and serotonin. Melatonin is a vitamin slash hormone. I, 
you know, I don't know why Dr. Bubenik calls it a vitamin slash hormone, but I can see his point, actually. I mean, I'm, I don't think you could, you could really call it a vitamin, but it is non-toxic and it has a lot of, a lot of multiple, of, of multifunctionality in the body. It does a lot of different things. And then we come to the stress hormone or so-called stress hormone, cortisol. Most people know it as your body stress hormone. That's not to say that cortisol is a bad guy in the world of biochemistry. Unfortunately, this, this much maligned hormone is really, as it turns out, it's really unfortunate that we have this bad view of cortisol. It's a feel-good hormone. It's a feel-good hormone that gets a bad rap because of the imbalances that we live with or the, the struggle that the body has to balance all the craziness in our life. We've created this 21st century lifestyle that we think is all that in a bag of chips, but from a biochemical point of view, it's destroying our bodies. So as it turns out, cortisol is actually an important energizing hormone. It's an energizing chemical under, uh, under conditions of cortisol deficiency, which are common under conditions of cortisol deficiency. We don't feel so good. When people get on a cortisol drug, prednisone that is, which is prescribed for cortisol deficiencies, and they've been deficient in cortisol, and they get on prednisone, they feel great. You feel amazing. This is one of the reasons why cortisol became so popular when it first, uh, when it first came out in the 1940s, somewhere around the 1940s, probably late 1940s, maybe early 1950s, cortisol first became popularized. It was, it was really... Phew, when, when doctors first understood the power of cortisol, one of the, one of the most important... Uh, effects of cortisol, this is really important what I'm going to say here now, one of the most important effects of cortisol is it shuts down the immune system. This is so important because it is a, a linchpin, foundation of the pharmacomedical models, health, or, or I don't want to say health, we'll say medical strategies. It's not health strategies, they're medical strategies, not health strategies. The linchpin, or at least one of, one of the major foundations of the pharmacomedical model's idea for treating the body is based in the fact that cortisol shuts down the immune system. You say, what? What does that mean? Well, when doctors figured out that they could shut down the immune system and that they could eliminate inflammatory symptoms, they went crazy. They were unbelievably ecstatic. I saw a video in pharmacy school where they had this... Uh, it was a, a convention, a medical convention from the 1940s or maybe early 1950s. A bunch of doctors were sitting in this room. And this little old lady comes walking down the, hall, uh, down, down the aisle in this conference center. And she, and she had a horrible case of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen rheumatoid arthritis when it's really bad, but it is awful. Her, her body was basically just crumpled up. Just to think of um, think of just taking a a piece of paper and squeeze and just crumpling it up right before you throw it in the trash. That's what her body was like. It was crumpled. She couldn't walk. Her hands were all curled in. She was just limping up. It was just a pitiful sight. She comes up the stairs and and uh, the doc the the speaker says, "I want you to take a good look at this this gal." Tells everybody to take a good look at this gal. They all take a good look at this gal. She goes back down the hall, back down the uh, aisle in the conference, in the conference. And then you cut to the next day, and the next day the speaker says, you "Remember that lady?" Everybody says, "Yeah." I look to the back, and you see the same lady walking up this aisle, just bounding like a like a spring chicken, like just a young buck. She's just walking the same lady. And it was an unbelievable thing. And this was to demonstrate the power of cortisol. This gal had been given cortisol. It was a post-cortisol miracle. Why? Why was it a post-cortisol miracle? Why did cortisol work so well on rheumatoid arthritis? So much so that they gave this lady a standing ovation. The conference was, was uh, one of the highlights of the conference was the introduction of cortisol, prednisone. Because... It shuts down the immune system. It shuts down the inflammatory system, which temporarily may be good as a drug, but it isn't good in the long term. However, in the body, cortisol is one of the ways our immune system is controlled. Infl inflammation is controlled. It's important. But there's, uh, there's some implications here. Hypercortisol shuts down the immune system. When hypercortisol secretion, because you're under a lot of stress, shuts down the immune system, you're more prone to cancer and other immune diseases. 
All right, we'll continue when I come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or cortisol or the pineal gland or fluoride or a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with and you need help with, uh, or if you have a success story you'd like to share or just want to comment, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We're talking cortisol and melatonin and... Cortisol is just fascinating, fascinating stuff. It antag- melatonin is one of the best ways to balance out your cortisol, by the way. Melatonin and cortisol have an antagonistic kind of effect. So if you're dealing with some of the symptoms of too much cortisol, we'll talk about that in a, here in a sec, melatonin might be helpful. You do have to be a little bit careful with melatonin. Vitamin A can help balance out your cortisol. Pregnenolone can help you balance out your cortisol. We'll get into all this here in a little bit. Cortisol is anti-inflammatory because it shuts down the immune system. Now, you might say, well, that's not all, that doesn't sound like such a great thing to shut down the immune system. It seems common sense. You know, why would you want to shut down your immune system? Your immune system is a defense system. Well, it turns out that the immune system, when it's, over, when it's, when it's stimulated, not overstimulated, but when it's stimulated, one of its calling cards or its main calling card is inflammation. So when you have inflammation, you have an immune system problem, or an immu- not a problem, an immune system effect. Inflammation is a sign of the immune system. The immune system is your defense system. One of its major tools is inflammation. Inflammation is a defensive response. I can think of no more fundamental, critical idea when it comes to health and healing than to understand that inflammation is a defensive response response. It's like an airbag going off in your car. Now, if you've ever had an airbag go off in your car, it saved your life perhaps, but you can end up with the, uh, broken bones. You can end up with a broken neck for, uh, if, you, if the bag hits you just the right way, because the airbag is, while it's protective, it can also be destructive. That's inflammation. While it's protective, it can also be destructive. It gets, it's destructive when it's out of control. It's out of control when we're constantly offending the body. When we're constantly putting an offending agent in the body, you will constantly have a defensive response. This idea is so critical to understand. I can, there's probably no more important idea to understand about the body than to understand that inflammation is a defensive response. It's an airbag, and it has a good side and it has a bad side. The good side is when it saves your life. The bad side is when it's chronic and long-term, particularly when it's, just, when it's chronic and long-term, just not quite intense enough for you to notice anything, but just under the radar. Because while it's under the radar to our conscious minds, it's not under the radar to the body. It's exerting its negative effects inside the body, even if you don't know it's happening. Inflammation is like a beaver's dam surrounding a weakened, vulnerable, or otherwise fragile area. Just think of a beaver's dam or a wall built around a fragile area. Why is that area fragile? Because it's chronically being attacked. When it's chronically being attacked, the body will inflame around it, and that inflammation will not go away. The problem is, is if it doesn't go away, because the inflammation is like a, like a wall, oxygen can't get through. Nutrients can't get through. And toxicity can't leave. So the inflammation is going to cause collateral damage. So the inflammation is a defensive response. It causes collateral damage. The collateral damage itself triggers more inflammation, which then causes more collateral damage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's disease, period. Capital P, end of story. That is disease. I'm not... I don't don't want to beat a dead horse here, but it's so important to understand. What we call disease is the immune system manifesting and and showing up and doing its good work, except chronically and long-term, which leads to collateral damage, which leads to more defensive response, et cetera. That's disease. Cortisol shuts down the defensive response. So, wow, no more symptoms, no more inflammation, no more pain. 
The problem is that defensive response, that, defend, uh, that immune system defends us. So now you're more prone to risks from viruses and bacteria and cancer and all the other ways, sun damage and all the other ways that the, the uh, uh, immune system is supposed to protect us. So while it may be symptomatically pleasant and relieving to have your, to have your, your rheumatoid arthritis symptoms go away, I can see why that could be helpful and why that would earn a standing ovation if you, never, if you didn't really understand what was happening. In the long run, it's not a good thing. Using anti-inflammatories and immune system suppressants is very, very bad biochemistry. Very bad biochemistry, yet it is the linchpin, the foundation of the modern medical model, the pharmacomedical model's strategy for dealing with disease. And it's all about cortisol. Cortisol is your adrenal... Ad ad cortisol is your is the manifestation the, the visible manifestation of the immune system in action it's the mediator to inflammation it's the key to the inflammatory process when inflammation occurs cortisol go, comes to the rescue it acts as an anti-inflammatory at that point however over the long term because of its immune suppressant effects you'll end up with skin sensitivities you'll end up with immune diseases You'll end up with uh, uh, elevated stress response, including secretion of oils in the skin. Ultimately, you'll also end up with inflammation because your body will start to not listen to cortisol. One of the major responses, the body's always responding to things, one of the major, 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 major responses to elevated cortisol is hypothyroidism, which is an epidemic. And if you try to take your thyroid hormone, that's not going to help you because the problem isn't the thyroid. The thyroid is responsive to the adrenal glands. Now, there's other causes, certainly, of, um, of hypothyroidism, namely food intolerances and, and, and uh, digestive problems, Hashimoto's, autoimmune disease of the thyro thyroid. But one of the major causes is, involves cortisol. Excessive secretion of cortisol goes hand in hand with hypothyroidism. Oh, here's another juicy one. When you're making a lot of cortisol because you're under duress, your body's going to make more cholesterol. Elevated cholesterol also goes hand in hand with increased cortisol secretion and, by the way, hypothyroidism. In fact, hypothyroidism, uh, uh, hypercholesterol is like a, it's like a uh, red flag. It's like a diagnostic tool for hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism, low thyroid functioning, elevated cortisol. They're all go at elevated cholesterol, and yet we'll go to a doctor and get a statin drug. Now, I hope this isn't too sciencey and too complicated, or, or you know that you guys aren't tuning out because it's too much chemistry or too much science. Because this is so important. Not understanding this is why we're bamboozled and lied to and ripped off, and not served by the medical model. Not understanding this basic idea, these basic ideas. So, cortisol is your stress hormone. Elevated cortisol can cause the immune system to be suppressed. Elevated cortisol uh, and, and inflammation go hand in hand. When the body is hyperinflamed, it will start to secrete high levels of cortisol. These all, all these things go together. Hypothyroidism, elevated, too much cholesterol. What do you do? Lighten up, for one thing. Relax the body. That's one of the, most, that's one of the easiest things you could do to lower your cortisol. Relax. And there's all kinds of ways to relax. I know, you know, we talk about supplements all the time, but just taking a hot bath can lower your cortisol. A warm bath, I should say. Taking a warm bath can lower your cortisol. Getting a back rub, a foot rub, a hand rub, those can all lower your cortisol levels without doctors, without pharmacists, without the pharmacomedical model. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, or the longevity products, or our true treatment products, if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to join the Brightside Ben team, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. We also have a search engine up at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com where all, where all our longevity products, are, are, our Brightside episodes are archived. We have probably six years or so of archived information and a search engine at brightsideben.com and 
benfuchsarchives.com. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a moment from, uh, from the National Academy, uh, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Flu may be spread just by breathing. New study shows coughing and sneezing not required. It's easier to spread the influenza virus, the flu, than previously thought, according to new University of Maryland-led study researchers. Interesting. Now you can get the flu by just breathing. This is more scare tactics, people. Of course you can get the flu by breathing. If it gets in your respiratory system, you're gonna, if it's in the air, you can get the flu. But the body can handle the flu if your immune system is doing its business, speaking of immune suppression, the more cortisol you're secret secreting, the less likely you're go going to be to be able to withstand the flu. The solution is not to give yourself a vaccine. The solution is to figure out how to lower your cortisol levels, to ba keep your cortisol levels where uh, in the adrenal glands, where they, uh, keep your uh, uh, cortisol levels from leaving the adrenal glands more than they absol absolutely need to. And there's lots of ways to do that. A, a hot bath from an immune system perspective, warm bath from an immune system perspective is way more functional and important for fighting the flu than the vaccine. From a biochemical perspective, the flu vaccine doesn't work for everybody. The flu vaccine can cause the flu. And who knows what you're getting in the vaccine, by the way. They don't tell you that part. There's no such thing as a vaccine that's just a vaccine. It has to be in a vehicle, it has to be preserved. And the vaccine is a living entity. You're putting it into your bloodstream. This is not good. Even if it's a dead living entity, a dead entity, it was formerly, formerly alive, and it's got the signals of life. That's how it works. You, vaccines are not to be messed around with, and certainly not for something like the flu. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Can you die from the flu? Yeah, you can die from the flu if you're sick, if, you're, if your body's super-duper fragile. But that's not a reason to take the vaccine. That's a reason to make your body stronger, even if you're elderly. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to the phones and say good morning to our friend Elaine. Hey, Elaine. Hey, good morning. What's going on? Oh, I got on today. Yesterday I was on uh, hold and I... I oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, I got busy um, I, just, I wanted to share, and I had a question for you. I wanted to share... With the listeners, um, a client of mine told me about uh, with the tangy tangerine, she was doing a little something to kind of help improve the taste a little bit to, to cut the vitamin taste. I just wanted to make sure it was okay with... Um, say say that one more time. She wanted to so, cut it. To cut that vitamin taste, you know, that little aftertaste. Yeah, yeah so, I don't... I, the, the taste in general is a problem with the BTT, but it usually means you're taking too... You're, you're doing too much. And by too much, I mean too much for you to handle the taste. They put a lot of... Oh, Citru now I you know, love. I you love like it. the taste? What she said, yeah. she take uh, to take one or two drops of essential oil, which is lemon, and I don't want to give a brand. I don't know if I can say DoTerra. Yeah, but, you can say whatever you want, but I would say Longevity, Longevity Ancient Legacy, but whatever. Yeah, lemon. So, yeah, lemon. Uh, one or two drops of the lemon oil. That's great. Uh, That's wow. a great idea. So wait a minute, you do the full two scoops and you just do one or two drops of lemon oil? I just do a heap, heaping one scoop and then like one drop okay. of um I'm going to give that a shot. I'll report the, back to you. I'm, I'm going to give that a shot and report back to you. Yeah, it is so super good. Okay, and actually good. my daughter is drinking the tangy tangerine now without complaining. So. Okay, so that's, that's okay. excellent. I can see how that would work. Good job. Thank so you for sharing that. that. Is that okay? No, no, it's, no that, of course it is. Absolutely. It's great. I'm going to try it, my, I'm going to try it today. I love it because there's no sugar. And I can't really do, two, I mean, I've never been able to, previously to be, to be able to do a full scoop or, you know, two scoops, yeah. no way, but even one scoop. So I, I like just sipping on it. But um, I, if you can do, if that can help you do a larger dose, I'm all for it. I'm, I'll give it a shot and let you know. Super yummy. So um, okay. that's what else? been... And then I just wanted to share a, a book, and I, I haven't heard you talk a whole lot about castor oil. Oh, yeah. The, the Sleeping and Prophet? You know about The Sleeping Prophet? No. You never heard of Edgar, Edgar Casey? Oh, yeah. So Yeah, he uh, was big on castor oil. And, you know, interestingly, castor oil is probably the most medicinal and uh, biochemically potent 
of the vegetable oils. I, there may be ones I'm, one I'm missing, but it's certainly in the top few. I think it's the most powerful of all the vegetable oils. Do you know the most toxic substance known to man is this chemical that they use in uh, the KGB, Russian spy agencies and spy agencies in general used to use. They would put it on the tip of an umbrella and they would touch you with this stuff and you would die. And this is known as the most potent substance, it's the most toxic and powerful, powerful bio, uh, uh, chemical uh, it's a natural substance, natural chemical that, that we know of. It's called ricin, R-I-C-I-N, and it comes from castor, the castor plant. Wow. The, ca hmm. the castor plant is also a source of something called ricinoleic acid, which hmm. in, the, in the skincare world is prized for its uh, very interesting biochemical properties. It's like a fatty, it's like a watery fatty substance. It has both watery qualities and fatty qualities, unlike any other fat. And that makes it really effective for pa uh, uh, helping medicine pass through the skin and uh, like a transdermal penetrant kind of ingredient. And uh, somehow or another, Edgar Casey, who I presumably knew nothing about skin chemistry or chemistry in general, he, he was right on. He nailed it because he was really big on the medicinal value as well as the uh, supportive value of castor oil, how castor oil can be used to help trans transmit or, or transport substances into the blood through the skin. And also for its um, very powerful medicinal properties. So, yes, I don't talk about castor oil because it actually stinks really bad. I hate the smell of it. And I hate the smell of ricinoleic acid. And I, I don't use it unless I have to. And, I, you know, the old, the old kind of stories about people getting forced to eat, drink castor oil by their moms and such. You know, cause, and, and no kids want to eat castor oil. Cause castor oil is just disgusting stuff. But it's very powerful. Does that yeah, answer your Yeah, yeah. this book, it's called The Oil That Heals by William Mc, okay. uh, McGarry, by uh, MD, and, and I've seen it in, in my patients, you know, if they'll have like an area of swelling, um, I had a patient with her knee replaced and she couldn't get it past, you know, she could hardly bend it, so we did a number of different um, manual therapy techniques for in physical therapy, but then I also told her to put on castor oil packs, you know, 20 minutes, and and wow, what, it, what I've seen it do... Elaine? Hey, Elaine? I think yeah. you lost one. Okay. And that's a commercial, yeah. Elaine. Thank you so much for sharing that, and thank you so much for that uh, tip about the lemon oil. Okay. Appreciate it. Have a great All day. Right. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that's the music. We'll take a break and come back with more of your phone calls on the bright side right after this. Don't go away. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're in the Sacra uh, Sacramento, California area, I will be doing talks uh, in Roseville, Granite Bay, uh, actually Roseville on Friday, January 26th, and then Granite Bay uh, in the evening. In the morning, I'll be, or in the afternoon, 1 to 2 p.m., I'll be in Roseville, and then in the evening, I'll be in Granite Bay, uh, Holistic Lighthouse Event Center, 401B Vernon Street, Roseville, a nine five six seven eight Friday the twenty sixth and then in the evening at uh, Rayleigh's Market Event Room six eight four five Douglas Boulevard Granite Bay uh, zip nine five seven four six if you want to Google that call Jay for more information nine one six seven one two ninety five zero four I will be uh, in uh, the, uh, back at the Holistic Light, uh, Lighthouse Event Center on Saturday uh, on Sunday from ten to eleven a.m. that's Sunday the twenty eighth. Uh, 401B Vernon Street, Roseville. And then on Saturday, I'll be doing two talks in uh, Granite Bay and Loomis, morning 11 to 2 p.m. in Granite Bay. Uh, and then Saturday uh, in Loomis, call 916-712-9504. Uh, call That's 916-712-9504 for more information. 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Jim. Uh, welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Happy New Year, my friend. Thank you. How's it going? What can we do for you? Well, Ben, I'm scheduled to have a full knee replacement, my left knee, at the end of February. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it started for me, I, I damaged my knee when I was a young kid. I was about 16, and I had surgery back then for an assist on the cartilage. Okay. And uh, anyways, uh, it's... 
you know, back then they just opened the knee up and took everything they wanted out. Uh, but I'm 69 now. Okay. In my last episode with my knee swelling up, they took out uh, 230 cc's of liquid out of my left knee. So it's uh, quite painful. But uh, anyways. Uh, they, anything I else really going on? An anything else going on? I like body-wise, blood sugar-wise, blood pressure-wise, weight? Anything else you could think of going nope. on? Nope. That's it? It's the only nope, thing? Nope. Just your knee? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. All right. Anyways, I wanted to... They, I'm real leery about drugs, okay, and what they want me to take prior to surgery is meloxicam, I guess it's called. Yep, uh, I know about it. They want to keep the swelling down because um, uh, surgery is an anti-inflammatory band? Yeah, it's an anti-inflammatory, exactly. So uh, here's the deal. There's a zillion things that you can do pre- and post-surgery that you should do, and I'm going to tell you what I would do if it was me, okay? You want to pound okay. the bone broth protein every day. How much, when's your, when, it, when is your surgery? When did you say you were having your procedure done? The 28th of February. Okay, perfect. So you got a month to go, right? Today. Start today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Start today. Every single day until your, until your surgery and then after your surgery for probably three or four weeks. Rest of your life, really. But at least three or four weeks after starting today. Bone broth protein. I'm just going to go through a zillion things. And you can, you, know, you can do the research on your own here. But I'm just going to tell you what I would be doing. Bone broth protein every day. Silica gel, liquid, uh, sil liquid silica gel every day. A uh, bone broth every day. High hyaluronic every day. Vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, essential fatty acids, uh, uh, N-acetylcysteine and vitamin E, selenium. Uh, any, if you have any digestive things going on, you've got to make sure that you, your digestive system is pristine as can be. Do, do a smoothie once or twice a day, cracking an egg inside uh, with your bone broth protein. If you can handle whey protein, you can do that too. By the way, lots of eggs, uh, not necessarily a dozen a day, which some people do, but you know, like you know, at least a couple a day kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, make sure you're doing uh, whatever kind of exercise in that area that you can do to build some muscle. The, cert the healing will begin as soon as the scalpel puts his knife in, or as soon as the surgeon puts his scalpel into your, into your knee, that's when the healing begins, okay. as soon as you're cut. And if the more nutrients you have readily available, oh yeah, vitamin K, don't forget that, and don't forget digestive enzymes all on an empty stomach. Um, the more nutrients you have available for the body to use to heal, uh, the quicker the healing process is going to take place. And make sure you're doing it... Uh, and make sure you're doing uh, it, well, maybe four weeks after the procedure, something like that, all right? And then don't, I don't know if I said gelatin, but gelatin can also be very helpful for you. Gelatin powder, Knox gelatin, unsweetened. Look for organic, actually. That's probably better. Okay? Okay. There's, an, there's another um, prescription they want me to take two prior. And it's gabapentin. Yeah. Oh, really? It, That's kind of interesting. Yeah, what is, is that... Is that a blood thinner or something? No, or? no, no. Gabapentin is, well, it's used for a lot of things, but it's kind of used for a, a, a sleep or, anxiety, or it's kind of used for a, uh, epilepsy or uh, um, uh, uh, seizure disorders. <laughs> seizure disorders. It's also sometimes used for anxiety issues. Um, it's kind of a downer, like kind of like a, a Neurontin is technically the name. They'll use it for hot flashes sometimes, um, to general pain issues. I think they're probably using it for the pain is what I would guess is why they're using it as a, oh. a pre-treatment for pain issues. I hadn't heard of using gabapentin pre-treatment, though. That's a new one on me. Yeah. Uh, but typically it's used for neuropathies, neuropathies, restless leg syndrome, that kind of thing. What would they probably give me as far as I, I understand the blood thinners are, are something that they They'll recommend. give you a blood thinner. They'll give you a blood thinner because blood clotting is one of the ways the body defends itself from the scalpel. The scalpel is not your body's friend. The scalpel might as well be a lion's teeth. And so the body's oh. <laughs> defending itself from the lion's teeth. It doesn't know you're in a surgical procedure. It just thinks a lion just took a bite out of you. So it will clot the blood so you don't bleed all over the African savanna, if you know what I'm saying. So it's a blood, blood right. clotting what, is, a, what, is a typical response to surgery, and the way doctors will handle it is by giving you um, a heparin or, or, or warfarin or something like that, a, a, a blood thinning drug. So the problem is the blood thinning drugs are massively, horribly toxic. So, you know, I would avoid it. They, you know, they'll sometimes ask you if you want a blood thinner. Uh, if they give you an option, I would say absolutely, positively not, uh, unless it's, you know, they surgically deem it necessary, I suppose. Once you're having a surgical procedure, you're really opening up Pandora's box, and you've got to do things that you wouldn't do otherwise. So, 
you may need a blood thinner, but if you can avoid it, you want to avoid it. Say, doctor, do I really, really, truly need a blood thinner? I'd like to do without it if possible. All right, Jim. Now, is there is there a preference to blood thinners that you would recommend? No, if I do have to have one. No, absolutely not. They're all blood thinners. They're all nasty. Supposedly the new ones are less nasty. No, they're all nasty. Blood thinning is tightly say, regulated. When you play around with the blood thinning, blood clotting process, I should say, blood clotting is tightly regulated. When you play around with the blood clotting process, you play with fire. The blood is the life. You do not mess with the blood, period. They knew it in the Bible, biblical days. You do not mess with the blood. Nothing will mess with the blood pharmacologically more than a blood thinning drug, and this is what accounts for their toxicity. Same with the beta blockers so you, and the calcium channel blockers, too. Go ahead. So you think that uh, not taking a blood thinner, it would be a better uh, way to go? Than I can't tell you because I don't know what the, your whole surgical deal is, but I would suggest you ask the doctor if you can go without a blood thinner. That would be my suggestion. Jim, I want to get one more call in, my friend. Good, good luck. God bless you. I hope everything Thanks, works out for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. All right, let's move on to oh, Truth Raider. What's up, Truth Raider? Good morning, pharmacist Ben. Can you hear me um, all right? You're coming in loud and clear, Truth Raider, with the truth. What's okay, up? Okay, very good. What's up? I'm calling you by way of computer. So okay. I wanted to call you today, and I wanted to thank you for all the help that you provided for my, my dear beloved, I guess you would call it a super parent. Oh, I'm sorry that she passed. Mom. I'm sorry she passed. But thank yeah. you for. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So she, but yeah. she lived to be. Uh, she lived to be uh, almost 100, right? She was born January 12, 1919, in Dunsmore, Pennsylvania, and she entered into eternal life on January 7, 2018. She was going to be 99. That's all, and she was healthy and good and strong and clear-headed and all that till the end, huh? Yes, very lucid. Had no problems as far as uh, heart uh, ailments, as far as cardiovascular disease, no cancers. What do you think she did right um, you, as her uh, as her stepchild or whatever you want to call your yourself? Uh, yeah. uh, what do we, what do you what do you think she? Uh, what would you attribute that her longevity to and her good health? Staying away from GMOs, lots of fruits and vegetables. But the bad thing was that she lived on potatoes. She loved eating potatoes. Did that see, that's interesting. Yeah, but she's, you know, yeah. you know what? Whatever, whatever works for you. What I talk about is theoretical and for most people. But if somebody gets, you know, somebody does fine eating just potatoes and she lives to be 99 years old, who am I to say that it's, it's a bad thing? Right? <laughs> right? All right, Carl, the Truth Raider, thank you for sharing. I'm sorry for your thank loss. And you. talk to you again soon. All right, buddy. Take care. Okay, that is all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. You can also sign up to join The Bright Side Ben team right off our websites, or you can call 866-735-2470. And also, please check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com or retinol 5% gel. If you're dealing with accelerated aging or dark spots or, or acne blemishes or truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, and Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to y'all later. Bye for now.